Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. This is a new year and a new unit. This is Unit 6, Integration and the Accumulation of Change. So we've gone from derivative to the antiderivative, to the integral. We're talking about integration, integration celebration. And so we're going to talk about the accumulation of change today. And so let's, let's talk about what that means in a real-life situation. Uh, here we have a tank being filled with water at a constant rate of 8 liters per minute for 4 minutes. And what's the volume of water in the tank? Now, this is pretty easy. You can probably answer this without talking about the, the graph or anything like that. But we are filling it at 8 liters per minute. So at zero time, at zero minutes, we're filling with 8 liters per minute. At one minute, 8. At th two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, we're still filling it with 8 liters per minute. And so think about the units here. We have 8 liters per one minute times 4 minutes is equal to 32 liters. And so what are we really doing here is we're really taking the area, the area of this graph. So the area of the graph is equal to what we call the integral, the accumulation of the change here. And so you can see how the integral base times height, we got our base is 4 minutes, our height is 8 liters per minute, the minutes cancel out, you're left with 32 liters. Pretty easy. We're just taking the integral or the area. Which means if we have something like this, we had 8 liters per minute, but look at what happens. Now the liters per minute, the rate, begins to decrease. We've begun to negatively accelerate, if you're going to use kind of a, a, a physics type term or a first semester type term. And so we want to find out the liters. And so we're going to take the area. We know the area here is 32 liters. The area of this is the area of a triangle. We have one half of the base, and you can see the base is six units long. So one half of that is three. Three times eight is 24 liters, which gives you a total volume of 32 and 24, which is 56 liters. Now, we took the area. So what is the area here? The area is the volume. And the area was what we call the integral. The integral of the rate, and we are looking with respect to time. Now, we were really taking, in this problem, we were really taking the area, the integral, from 0 all the way to 10. And so that helped us, if you remember, when we had liters and we wanted to find, if we do the algebra here, if we change the volume divided by the change in time, that equaled the rate. Look at your units. Volume over time, the rate is liters per minute, which means the volume here, the integral, is the antiderivative of what we've been doing. So it's the complete opposite. So what do we do if we have something like this? What's the volume in the water tank after six minutes? This is not as easy to find the, the integral, the area, because we have a, a little curvy function going on here. We can't take the derivative. The derivative would help us find the rate of the rate. It would help us find the acceleration. So we would need to take the integral. So the volume would equal the integral of the rate with respect to time. And we are taking from zero minutes all the way to six minutes. We call those the limits of integration. So the volume would equal the integral of zero to six of negative x squared plus six x because that's my function with respect to x. Now I could use this in terms of time. And, uh, and that's probably a little bit more exact to use instead of x, use time, but they're synonymous ultimately, is we're trying to find the volume and that is the integral. And so that helps to find the area, the full area in between this, this graph right here. And so that helps us every single little bit. Now, what would be an, uh, maybe an easier way to do it, not as exact, is we could kind of take little rectangles, couldn't we? We could try to take this rectangle right here, and then try to take a, another rectangle right here, and 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 another little rectangle right here, and, and, and add up all of those, and that would be the, the, 
the volume because that would be the area underneath it. But guess what? That would be an underestimation, wouldn't it? Because I am not accounting for this this area right here, this area right here, this area right here, 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 and all kinds of stuff. Okay? I'm not accounting for these little areas. And so we're going to learn how to find the area using these things, uh, using the integral, and we're going to find the area using little rectangles as well. So here, here's an example problem. It says, at time t, the population of bacteria grows in Ms. Bauman's classroom at a rate of r of t grams per day, where t is measured in days. And so here, we're taking the area, what this integral sign means, is the area from 0 to 8, from 0 days to 8 days of the growth rate of grams per day with respect to time. So that would end up becoming just grams, wouldn't it? Because here with rate, we had grams per day, and we're doing that with respect to days, which leaves us with grams. So what does that mean? What is the meaning of this integral? The meaning is this is how many grams of bacteria grows in eight days. That's our grams of bacteria. That is growing in eight days. And so that gives us the exact number. Not an average, not an accumulation, not an estimate, not an overestimate or underestimate, but a perfect value. Okay? So here it says uh, Eden. Eden was walking towards this guy named Adam and uh, walking at a rate, a velocity of r of t kilometers per hour, where t is in hours. So what in the world is this meaning? This is meaning the integral, or the area, it means that we're going from two hours to three hours, aren't we? Two hours to three hours. And this is the velocity, the rate at which she's walking at kil in kilometers per hour, and the time with respect to hours. So that means equals six. That means she walked six kilometers. When did she walk six kilometers? Between hours two and three. I don't know if she walked fast at times or slow at times. I don't know what, what's happening in terms of the rate. But what do I know is she walked six kilometers from hour equals two to hour equals three. And that is what she walked. Here's one more uh, problem. It says, Julia's revenue, she made some cash money, and she made it in thousands of dollars per month. So what is this integral saying is from month one, from month one to month five. And it says the rate, remember that's thousands, that's thousands per month with respect to months. So that means she made, at the end of the day, some money. But at the end of the day, she really made $19,000, didn't she? But what did she have initially? She had $3,000 initially. So initially, she had $3,000 plus the money she made from month one to month five, which means total she made $19,000 She made, obviously, it says Julia made $3,000 in the first month of the year. So the first month, she made $3,000. And then it started changing from month one to month five. The total amount that she made was nineteen k, $19,000. So sometimes you'll see a number in front. What does that mean is initially we know we're starting not at zero. Her revenue is not starting at zero at one month. Her revenue is starting at $3,000 at one month. And after five months, she made a total amount, including that first month, of $19,000. It's a good uh, introduction to integration and accumulation change. Why do I know? Because I'm a good-looking guy. And so I want you to have a great day. I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye.